I brought my tool bag into the office today so you could see what kind of hand tools I use on a regular basis. This is it. I didn't prep for this. I just pulled it out of my truck and brought it in here so we could see what it actually looks like. I have a newer bag. This is a CLC 1509. So I figured I'm going to swap everything out of here into the new one. So I might as well walk through all the stuff that I carry with me. Might as well start with the, uh, the big stuff. Okay, here's one of the big guns. This is my Fluke TS-52 Pro. It's the butt set that I uh, have been carrying with me for about five years, as you can tell. I've uh, beat this up pretty bad, and it has withheld everything that I've thrown at it, including water and dropping it off at eight foot ladder. I'll be doing a butt set review in the next couple videos. This will be one of the ones that we test, as well as Fluke's new TS-54, which is going to replace this, as well as my Fluke TS-100. I keep it Velcroed to the shoulder strap of the bag. It seems to do pretty well. I don't doesn't fall off all that much. For those of you who aren't familiar with what the TS-100 does, it's a time domain reflectometer. I use it as a toner and uh, to tell me distance to shorts or faults on wiring. I have the bed and nail leads which seem to work best for me. If you're not familiar with what time domain reflectometry does, is it actually sends a pulse down the wire at a certain speed, waits for that noise to be reflected by a short or an open, and then measures the time that it takes for that pulse to get back to the actual toner. This one has the smart tone technology, which generates five different tones. So if you want to know whether you've got uh, the correct wire or not, you don't have to guess because it'll actually change the tone. So here's a little demonstration. And if you short the wire, it'll change the tone. On other tone probes, if you actually short the wires together, which you think are the right wires, it will attenuate the signal, but it doesn't change any tone. So you could actually be shorting it to ground, but you could not have the right wire. You could just be shorting one of the leads actually to ground. The new Flute TS-54 actually incorporates this feature inside the actual butt set itself. So when I do that review, I'll get into that a little bit deeper. But if you're interested in the TS-100 and what it does, keep in mind that they've come out with a TS-100 Pro. So this tests faults up to 3,000 feet, and they actually had two different versions of this. One was actually uh, feet, and the other one was actually meters. So you could do the conversion if you wanted to, if you had one or the other. However, the new one has a couple cool features, such as being able to set meters to feet. So if you're in a different country other than the U.S., where we use feet predominantly, you can switch it over. Some of the stuff that we do in Datacom actually is in meters. That's how uh, the majority of the standards are. But I like the fact that you can switch back from feet to meters. The TS-100 finds faults up to 3,000 feet. The TS-100 Pro finds faults up to 8,000 feet. And I believe it finds bridge taps up to 3,000 feet as well. If I get my hands on one of those, I'd like to do a review on it. But what I'm hoping is the new TS-54 will allow me to get rid of this and just carry the toner. Since it actually has a tone generator in it and a TDR that finds faults up to 3,000 feet, which would replace this. This is the multimeter that I use on a regular basis. It's the Fluke 117. As you can see, it's been through a lot with me. These are the regular leads that it actually comes with. These are the TL175s, I believe. The T-Pack does not come with it. This is an option. It's great for grabbing onto control panels or alarm boxes, and it helps put it actually at an angle where you can actually see the screen. A couple features of the 117 that I do like is it has a low impedance mode and it'll help you detect ghost voltage. It also has a capacitance mode. It'll discharge the capacitor before you go to actually test it, which is good for an accurate reading, but also good if you haven't dissipated the charge off the capacitor, it does it for you so when you go to install it again, it doesn't shock the hell out of you. It does have a non-contact voltage sensor actually on the top. 
I find I don't use it as much because this T-pack kind of gets in the way and I'm always concerned that I'm not close enough to what I'm testing therefore not getting an accurate reading whether there's voltage on the line so I don't use it that much but it works fine in my opinion with or without the T-pack but I find that I always end up testing the voltage anyway with my leads so it's rare that I use this feature but it's nice to have and it actually is one of the reasons why I bought it. One of the things that kind of stinks about this and Dave Jones pointed it out on his blog is when you go to turn the meter all the way off it actually off is not actually in the fully counterclockwise position it's one notch away which is not that big of a deal but sometimes it's nice to just kick it over and know that you're off rg59 rg6 rg58 crimpers i use this for closed circuit tv stuff and some of the wireless antenna stuff that we do for radio frequency identification if we get one that's damaged and i got to repair it uh, and I don't have a replacement, which is ideally what I'd like to do, just replace the antenna if I have one on me. Um, I'll actually use this to uh, crimp a new connector on there. Solderless terminal crimpers from Ideal. They work really well. I've had these things for maybe 10 years, and they've never failed me. Got a couple different Klein wire strippers. These are basically the same model, just uh, different gauges of wire that can be stripped. I also have a pair of... Uh, Flute Network's D-snips. These are great for cutting thicker direct burial wires. And if I'm stripping smaller solid wire, I'll typically use these notches right here to actually strip the dielectric off of them. This was all the miscellaneous stuff in the bottom of the bag. Uh, levels, pretty obvious for leveling control board housings and uh, telephone entries, things that you need to look good as well as work good. I like using this small little stubby screwdriver. If you have a single gang box and you're actually screwing in or screwing out one of the fittings that are on top, this is great because it's got a nice fat head on it and it doesn't muck up the top of them. These are obviously pliers. And these are these robo grips are kind of nice if you don't have the right wrench on you and uh, it's not a sensitive piece of equipment you don't worry about uh, stripping the head or anything these are nice because it will fit up to maybe an inch head down to maybe quarter inch and work just fine pair of diagonal cutters this is the redneck version of an insulated screwdriver I'm not sure why i have this in here i must have been doing uh, something on a job and forgot to take this out, but this I keep in my specialty tools. I rarely use this and this is kind of unsafe anyway, but it's typically not in my handbag. Mike Sandman can wrench. This will allow you to get into network interface devices and some telecom boxes. Uh, it's got uh, 3 8 on one end, 7 16 on the other, and it's got the thin head, so for security reasons, they make them with the outer lip. This will actually stick in the can and open them up. I'm never quite sure what this was actually for. I guess it's a wire stripper. It's got a thin razor blade in there. We got a visitor. I may have tried to use these at one time, but I never could figure it out. Maybe I should have uh, read the manual on it. Just like uh, the D-snips, this actually has a plate with a couple different gauge notches in here. So if you need to strip a dielectric back, you can. I find it kind of hard to use. And this is a security bit that fits in the 3 8 in. It's got uh, one of those security Allen wrenches. It's got the nipple and the head of the screw. So it'll only take that. Typically, you'll find that security bit on the provider side of a network interface device. It's not uncommon that I have a 3 8 5 16 and quarter inch nut driver, but for some reason only the 3 8 inch nut driver has made it in there. Probably because I've been using this uh, Klein 11 in one. It's got, uh, let's see, quarter inch, 5 16 and then it's got 3 8 on this side. Prior to the last couple years, the, the 10 ways that they had, or 11 ways, or 11 in one, or 10 in one that they're called, this particular housing that uh, would have these different fittings, whether it be a flathead screwdriver or Torx or these square drivers, they were actually pretty thin and they would, have, they would break a lot. I think they finally figured it out and now they're using thicker material. 
I've been quite happy with this 11 and one. The few that I've had, I've never actually cracked the outside, which was common on the 516 nut driver that they had on the older ones. Lineman's pliers, no tool bag is complete without one of these. Channel locks. I call these the shocker. Because if you grab an energized circuit with these, you're getting your ass shocked. These are the shocker's nemesis. This actually still has the insulation intact. Punch down tool. It's got uh, 66 110 punch down tool on the other end. Cable Pro compression fitting crimper. Has the ability to do a couple different compression fittings. I happen to have the BNC crimper on there right now, which is primarily what I use this for. Sharpie. Telescoping flashlight with a magnet at the end. Oh, and it's got this little groovy head on it as well, too. I mainly just use this for the magnet on the end, but sometimes it helps as a flashlight. RJ11, RJ45 crimper. I like these little side cutters. I use these if I'm repairing a circuit board in the field. Electrical tape. I typically carry the white tape in case I have to uh, write on it. King Architectural Metal Pen. This is great for writing on the white electrical tape. I think that about does it for the tools that are on the inside. Oh, forgot one thing. Another pair of side cutters. These are going to stay in the shop. I don't need two pair of these in the field. That's what 10 years of carrying this bag around does. That's all the debris that it collects. Let's check in this front pouch, see what we got. Got some Cat 5V wire strippers and some do not remove tags. And let's see what we got in the back pouch. Well, it looks like a BNC to RCA connector fell out. Headlamp. I don't know how you pronounce this company. P-E-T-Z-L. I bought this off of Amazon and uh, I love this thing. Even during the day I use this if I'm looking up under something. That sounds kind of weird. If I'm looking in a dark hole. That sounds even more weird. If I need light, I'll put this headlamp on and use it. Here's a bunch of jumpers that I use for different things. I'm not sure what this thing is called. I call it a biscuit. It's not a biscuit, but that's what I call it. It allows you to actually plug into a phone jack through the RJ11. It allows you to break out the individual pairs of wires that are on an RJ45 or RJ11 connector and allow you to directly connect to the pairs. These are the alligator clips for my TS100. This is a RJ45 punch down holder. RG59, RG6, RG58 wire strippers. Uh, just some extra compression fittings and some adapters. And here's a little RJ11 to a 66 block uh, adapter. And this is the tool bag itself. Sometimes I'll use this steel loop to actually put my cordless drill in. I'll generally have my D snips here and a little flathead screwdriver on this side. I guess this is supposed to be for your cell phone, but I never use it for that. I just take uh, little pins and markers and put them on the side like that. I don't know where it's at, but I'll typically have my sheetrock saw in this particular pouch or this pouch and then it's got uh, that big pocket in the back i'll pull the new one out and start putting tools in it here's the new one well as usual they can't leave well enough alone this little brown strap or whatever here looks ugly as hell I was going to say that this ripped out the first time that I use it, but that's not true. This thing was good for a couple years. I never used it. I still don't know what it's for. I'm sure if I read the, the manual, I'll figure it out or whatever, but I never did like it. It seemed like it always got caught on stuff, and I probably should have just cut it off, but that's the end result is that it actually tears the bag. But this right here is just ugly as hell. Why they couldn't leave it solid black? All that's going to happen to this is it gets dirty anyway. And I don't know about you. 
again, this is just uh, the cosmetics of it, but this uh, brass looks like crap, or brass colored. I, I can't say that it's brass. It looks like they, again, did a real solid job on riveting the uh, strap right here. I use this for electrical tape so it doesn't actually see that much stress. I guess these little hooks look like they're about the same, but for some reason the newer one feels a little bit uh, cheaper, for lack of a better word. But if it works, it works. As long as I can get 10 years out of it like I got out of this, I'll be happy. The hook on the side, it looks like it's been designed a little bit different. I always found, this one's the old one right here on the left, I always found that this was just the right size to put my cordless drill in. If anything, maybe needed to be a tad bit a tad bit bigger so that cordless drill would actually fit deeper in. So I'm kind of concerned about this being a little bit narrower than this. And it's a different shape too. It looks like it's more square on the sides. But that feature is a feature that I only used every once in a while so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Again, it looks like it's got two pockets on the side. I said I kept my drywall saw on the other side, but actually I kept it in this one. This one's a little bit longer, and because the teeth are pretty sharp on the drywall saw, it stays in there pretty well. And I would imagine that's going to do the same here. It actually looks like actually looks like it might be just a tad bit bigger. The back looks like it was designed the same, so I got no complaints there. I like the hard plastic on the end of the zippers a lot better than I do the soft ones. I've never had any one of these break on me, but as you'll see on the front, the rubber ones seems like they come off pretty easy. See, these are the rubber ones, and I don't know why they couldn't just use the hard plastic ones on these as well too. I'm sure these are going to get ripped off within a matter of time. This one's about to fall off on the other side as well too. The design on the inside looks like it's pretty much the same. One thing I don't like about this design is it's not sewn into the bag right here. There's actually a lip under here that's the width of this whole part, top part of the bag. So as you can see, when I dumped mine over, dirt, debris, and small little parts collect under there. And I never did like that. It seems like to me they should have just sewn that into the bottom of the bag. It doesn't serve as a feature. You can't put any more tools in there because of it. On the inside, it looks like the design is pretty much the same. Uh, the zipper is pretty much the same. This zipper is really durable and never had any problems with it at all. Again, they use this ugly freaking color that all that's going to happen to this bag right here is after a couple years of use, this is just going to turn black anyway. So why in the heck did they do that? including using that same color of thread all through here. It's just cosmetic, but I think it just looks like crap, especially when it's going to get dirty anyway. This handle, uh, surprisingly enough, this handle stayed intact on my old one the whole time. I never had any problems whatsoever with the handle pulling out. Any spot where these little uh, rivets were, none of that I ever had a problem with. It looks like the new one is the same height as the old one. That is another complaint that I had. Because I use this particular pocket for my multimeter and some of my hand tools have really long handles, I'd have to push everything down just to get this over to zip it up. But once it was zipped up, it stayed zipped. But for me, that was rare. I'll typically use it in this particular configuration with the strap Velcroed to the bottom which for me, from the outside, I would have thought that would have been a horrible design. But the Velcro is really strong Velcro, and I've never had a problem with this strap just popping up and hanging out and snagging on something. On, on this side where they put this pouch, which apparently looks like it's supposed to be a cell phone holder, apparently it was designed in 1980 when cell phones were flip phones, and today's modern smartphones are not narrow enough to fit in here which for me was not a big deal. I never ever put my cell phone, or never wanted to put my cell phone in here anyway. If I'm up on a ladder, which I know is kind of dangerous, and my cell phone rings, I want to have it on me so my customer's calling me, I can communicate with them right away. But now that I look at it, it was probably never designed to be a cell phone holder anyway. It just, there's just not enough room. I never noticed this before on the old one and the new one has two actual compartments in here. So that'll be great for stacking pens and Sharpies and markers in there. 
So overall, CLC did another kick-ass job at building this. They didn't skimp on any of the, the quality of thread, quality of sewing, making sure just like this zipper right here has extra material on it so it doesn't actually pull out. Everything is built out of this thick material that they use. It's durable as hell and I expect this one to be exactly the same. Give me another 10 years of life. I just wish they would have changed that damn color and get rid of that and make this a little bit bigger. Other than that, this thing is badass. Let's start putting the tools back in here. All right, the tool bag's put back together and ready to go into service. A couple of things I forgot to mention was these hooks on the side, they still seem to be working okay. And these look to be a little bit thinner than the original ones. But one thing I had happen was this hook on one of the shoulder straps actually got bent over to the other side. I would imagine that's not a flaw in the design of it. It was probably that I put too much pressure on it. Also, you probably noticed that I hooked my butt set to one of these shoulder straps. On the old one, I did not notice any tearing or any damage or, or um, to either of these, and sometimes I'll hook it on either side. These straps, rivets, and the material itself is super strong. I wouldn't worry about hooking anything to these shoulder straps. It'll definitely hold up. So there it is. That's what a field technician's tool bag looks like. For the fun of it, I was going to see how much my tool bag weighs. 19 and a half pounds, not bad. So that's it. That's what I carry in my bag as well as a small review on this CLC 1509. If there's anything else that I had in my tool bag that you would like me to review or go into further detail, please let me know in the comments. On my plans to review, I do have the Fluke 117, the Fluke TS52 Pro, and the new TS54. I also plan to review the TS Fluke Networks TS100. I haven't sponsored a contest on YouTube yet, so I don't know what the policies and procedures are. But what I plan on doing is the first 10 subscribers enter their name into a drawing. Just write their name on a piece of paper, put it in a hat, draw it out. And I will send this uh, bag to you free of no charge. So if it's against policy to do that, or if it's void where you're at, or... I find out that there is a reason that I can't do it on YouTube like I plan on doing it. Um, I'll let you know and I'll, I'll do a follow-up video to that and, and tell you that it's canceled. I'll pay for shipping within the lower 48, but I do reserve the right to cancel this or change the rules at any time for any reason. So if you don't agree to those terms but you still want to subscribe, just subscribe and send me a note saying that you don't want to be entered into the contest. So thanks for watching, and remember, you got a 1 in 10 chance to win this bag. I'll even wrap it up in the Amazon box that I got the new one in, so you can pretend it's new, but it'll still be this uh, old bag. I'm curious to know what other field technicians carry in their tool bag, so please let me know if I missed anything in the comments below. I'm not sure what to do with my... What do I do with my hands?